Bernie Sanders was invited to speak at an MLK Day event by the NAACP, and he gave a speech on MLK that is really important, and I think that really everyone needs to see it because his words here are very powerful, and I think it demonstrates that Bernie Sanders is really honing his skills as an orator when it comes to delivering a message that is progressive, that demonstrates his understanding of both social and racial justice as well as economic justice. So here's his speech. It's relatively long, but I would encourage you to, if you don't want to sit through his speech during this segment, I'll link to his full speech in the description box. I'd actually encourage you to go there first before watching this because... Watching it in its entirety really gives you the full perspective, but nonetheless, here's a clip of his speech. It gives me no pleasure to tell you that we now have a president of the United States who is a racist. We have a president of the United States who has done something that no other president in modern history has done. What a president is supposed to do is to bring us together. And we have a president intentionally, purposely, is trying to divide us up by the color of our skin, by our gender, by the country we came from, by our religion. Racial equality must be central to combating economic equality if we are going to create a government that works for all of us and not just the one percent. Racism is alive when the United States Supreme Court and Republican governors make it harder for people of color to vote than when they suppress the vote. And that is why I believe we need a constitutional, Amer a constitutional amendment to guarantee every American the right to vote, <coughs> and that we enact automatic voter registration. Racism is alive and well when we have a broken criminal justice system and we have more people in jail than any other country on earth. We need in this country real criminal justice reform, and that means we need jobs and education for our young people, not more jails and incarceration. It means ending the cash bail system which puts people in jail for the crime of being poor. It means ending the so-called war on drugs, which has caused so much pain and destruction in this country. It means ending private prisons. It means, when we talk about criminal justice reform, understanding that we need police reform and that lethal force is the last resort, not the first. Now, in 1963, a few years ago, when I was a college student, I had the honor of being in Washington, D.C., to hear Dr. King's speech, the I Have a Dream speech. And along with hundreds of thousands of other Americans who were there that day, we were there to demand an end to racism and to support Dr. King's call for economic justice. Because let us never forget that the title of that march was Jobs and Freedom. Jobs and Freedom. And I find it remarkable that 56 years after that march, many of the demands that Dr. King and others made are still demands that we have got to fight for today. Dr. King, in my view, was one of the great leaders, not only in American history, but in modern world history. 
He was a man of unbelievable courage who understood not only that we have got to end racism, but that we need economic justice. Remember where he was when he died. He was in Memphis, Tennessee, standing with exploited sanitation workers who were struggling for decent wages. Think of the work he was doing at the end of his life. What he was organizing was a poor people's march. Remember that? And what he said is, we are going to bring together black workers and Latino workers and white workers and Native American workers, and we are going to change the national priorities of this country so that in this country, justice rings out for all that every American, regardless of the color of his skin, regardless of whether he or she is rich or poor, can have the quality of life that all human beings deserve. So today we are here not just to remember Dr. King, not just to honor Dr. King. We are here to fill his revolutionary spirit, to have the courage to take on the economic and political establishment and to create the kind of nation we know we can become. Thank you all very much. This speech gave me chills because I really am feeling more confident in Bernie's ability to communicate a message that is all-encompassing. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, before, when he talked about Medicare for All, when he talked to, about tuition-free public colleges and universities, what was the main smear that the establishment tried to perpetuate with regard to Bernie Sanders? They'd say, well, he's talking about, you know, policies that exclusively service the white working class in particular, not black working class Americans or Latino working class Americans. He's trying to reach out to the white working class. Now, we all know that that's bogus, but what he's saying here, and he goes into this in greater detail in the full clip, he makes it clear that all of his policies would in fact benefit all members of the working class, regardless of race, gender identity, sex, all members of the working class would benefit from his policies, and he actually went into really explicit examples. So, for example, he talked about healthcare disparities between blacks and whites, and how Medicare for All would help to close that divide. But also, he talked about the importance of seeking criminal justice reform because this is something that is needed. And we're talking about real, comprehensive criminal justice reform because it is leading to disproportionately black and brown Americans being locked up at a greater rate than whites. And he cited very specific policies, ending cash bail, ending the drug war. So understand that what I see here from Bernie is the willingness to listen to criticisms, even if those criticisms from the establishment are hacky, but he's honing his skills a lot more. He's making it clear that no, this is not an agenda that is tailored to the white working class. Stop disaggregating the working class. It's just the working class. And all of his platform, the totality of his policies, would benefit all members of the working class of all colors. So stop trying to disaggregate the policies he's talking about. Now, he then talked about MLK's legacy and how we're still having to fight for the vision of America that MLK wanted. And he ended his speech by saying that we need to make MLK's vision a reality. And I think that that's important and it resonated with me because what he's communicating, indirectly so, is that the struggle for equality and justice, it's ongoing. And it's not like what Bernie Sanders and the new progressive left are pushing for is new. We've been fighting for justice. We've been on the right side of history. So by linking what we're doing now to MLK and really linking it to all of the civil rights and economic battles of our country's history, Bernie Sanders is trying to put his movement and what he's about in perspective and let people know that it's an ongoing struggle. Politics is inherently about struggle. It's about people with power 
versus people without power. And it's never going to change. But the point is that we continue that struggle and we continue to right the wrongs of our country. So I really like what he said here because as he gears up to run for president, it's clear that he is going to do everything in his power to bring together all of the working class, create a multicultural coalition of working class individuals from across the country, of all demographics, to make sure that together we have class consciousness and there's solidarity among all of us working class people of all colors and genders. And we know what's at stake and what we have to fight. So this is a message that is really nice to hear because it's not divisive, you know, contrary to what you see on mainstream media from Donald Trump and whatnot, but it's something that needs to be said. Now, he also started off that speech by calling Donald Trump a racist, and that's what got a lot of the headlines, but I don't really understand why that got headlines, because I don't think it's very controversial to state the fact that Donald Trump is racist, because, I mean, anyone who says that that's debatable at this point is just being disingenuous, or they don't want to know the truth, so I don't even think that that's controversial or newsworthy. What matters here about his speech is what people aren't talking about, and that's the substance, and that's the very inclusive message of class sol solidarity among all of the working class, and he's really starting to understand the way to craft a message that makes that more clear, and at this point, I really hope that he announces soon because everyone else is already starting to hit the ground running. Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, Tulsi Gabbard. And I think that what he is saying here shows again that he just, he gets it. So Bernie, announce because we need you to start fighting now so we can start fighting for you because we believe in what you're saying and we believe in the policies you're promoting. You could support the Humanist Report at patreon.com slash humanist report. But trust me, I'd have way more supporters on Patreon if that was my podcast. Sad. <laughs>